LeBron and Jordan are without a doubt the top two players of all time, but to find out who's truly better, we're going to be putting them in the same draft class, with the first to win five championships being crowned the greatest of all time. LeBron's heading down to Orlando, with Jordan heading way up north to Toronto, and with both in the Eastern Conference, they'll be meeting in the playoffs at some point. It's only a matter of time until they completely run the league, but for now, let the rookie seasons begin. Both stars would have dominant first seasons with LeBron winning Rookie of the Year, but we'd actually be seeing more of Jordan as he snuck into the playoffs as the seventh seed facing Giannis in the Bucks. Mike's clearly the underdog in this one, but already we're getting a glimpse into his future dominance as he'd not just win one, not two, not three, but four games to shock the NBA world, eliminating Giannis to make it into the second round. And while he would shortly after be sent home by Philly, it's clear between him and LeBron, he's the one who's setting the tone. Rookie season, second round, Jordan might have something cooking. But for now, it's time for their first offseasons. Both players originally started off as 85 overalls, with Jordan moving up to an 89. But LeBron might have been extra motivated from missing the playoffs, progressing one overall higher to a 90. And it would show in the regular season, as he would lead the Orlando Magic to the third seed, making it to the playoffs for the first time. But waiting for him would be someone who already has some playoff experience. We have Jordan against LeBron in the first round. LeBron has home court. This is definitely going to be the first matchup of many. And as you would expect, with two all-time great players, we had an all-time great series. Both players would protect their respective home courts, leading to a 2-2 two two series tie. But Game 5 would be the turning point of the series as one star would rise above the other. And that would be Jordan, who would have 35 points, leading the Raptors to a win to take a 3-2 to two series lead. Jordan's running away with it. Jordan's about to go up 3-2 on LeBron. The series has been flipped completely on its head, and now LeBron has to go on the road in Toronto to try to force a Game 7. Jordan's not letting up though, and at a point, it was looking bleak for LeBron. But he would pull through, scoring from everywhere on the court, ultimately keeping his season alive. LeBron's going to the line. If he hits the free throws, we're going to Game 7. He made the first second free throws up, second free throws good. LeBron has successfully forced game seven, and with the momentum from last game and the fact that it's played in Orlando, there's a lot working in favor of him. But ultimately, it didn't matter, because Jordan would be the one in full control. He would cook the Orlando Magic defense, specifically LeBron, who had no answer for him, to eventually win the series. Oh my god, bro, the Raptors are pulling away. LeBron has just been upset by Jordan. Jordan was a sixth seed, LeBron was a third. And the media would let him have it, crowning Jordan as the true king of the league, which wound up aging gracefully as he would ironically eliminate the Bulls second round and the Bucks in the conference finals. Miraculously, Jordan has made it all the way to the finals in season number two, and now he's heading to Portland to try to finish the job. Jordan's up against Portland in the finals. He's going to have to go through Damian Lillard, who's also trying to get his first championship. Jordan has the chance to make history and be the first between him and LeBron to win a championship, and he would strike first winning game one in Portland. But Dame's waited well over a decade for this chance, and he would capitalize. He would win not just one, not just two, but three games in a row to take a 3-1 lead. Sounds kind of familiar, and now Jordan's season is on the line. I have some bad news, Mike. I have some horrible news. And the series wouldn't last long after that. Despite his best efforts, he would still be overshadowed by Dame. Instead of being the first to win a championship, he's the first to lose, a move that might be costly later on. Dame indirectly might have bailed out LeBron, bro, because if it wasn't for him, LeBron would be going down 1-0. And now we're already heading into season three. Jordan's a 94 overall, but ironically, LeBron would be the higher rated at a 96, and he would put that to good use, leading Orlando to 60 wins and the first seed. Meanwhile, Jordan might have been slightly broken from his trip to the finals, because he would wind up being the sixth seed, and worse, be eliminated in the first round by his hometown Charlotte Hornets. Jordan definitely fumbled that trip to the finals, he's being eliminated first round. And that's really important, because while LeBron would get eliminated second round, it would be the first time he's outlasted Jordan in the playoffs, which would be a major turning point. Because I'm the best player in the world. He would live in the gym in the offseason, dedicating 100% of his time to get better, while Jordan was getting sidetracked by other hobbies. And it would show in the following season, as LeBron's the first to 99 overall. But most importantly, he would lead Orlando to the one seed defeating New York, Boston, and Philly to make it to the finals. LeBron now has his first chance at a championship, but this time he has to go through the man who prevented Jordan from winning one earlier, and this time it's not getting any easier. LeBron's up against Portland in the finals who have Dame, but also a 75-year-old Kevin Durant. And 75-year-old Kevin Durant, simply put, can't guard 20-something-year-old LeBron James, as he would average 29-7, and leading Orlando to two wins at home to start off the series. LeBron's up 2-0, he might, he might do it. And if KD can't guard LeBron, there's no way Dame can. LeBron would continue to dominate by having 37 points on the road in Game 3 to eventually go up 3-0. LeBron's up 3-0, he might do it. LeBron is now one game away from his first championship to go up 1-0 on Jordan, but don't count out two all-time greats like Dame and KD. They might be old, but they have championship experience, and they would punch back even harder than LeBron did, because they would come all the way back, winning three straight, to force Game 7. 
just like Jordan, LeBron's on the brink of losing in the finals. But fortunately for LeBron, Game 7 would be played on his home court, and as you would expect, all three stars would show out. LeBron's living at the basket, Katie's pulling up from mid-range, and Dame's pulling up from the logo. But ultimately, none of that really matters, because it would come down to the final 30 seconds with LeBron and the Magic clinging onto a one-point lead. It all comes down to this. Franz with the ball, passes it over to LeBron. LeBron being guarded by, I can't tell who, what row was that? Was that Malik Beasley on LeBron? He kicks it out. LeBron on the board. LeBron, he could have dunked it. That's kind of awkward. I kind of wish he went up for the dunk. I really wish he went up for the dunk. Oh my God. LeBron, 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 he missed. Oh my God, he missed two free throws. No, no, Malik Beasley, stop. You fouled him, bro. That's Malik Beasley. That's not even KD. That's not even Dave. He missed the free throw. What is happening right now? The worst that can happen right now is that he ties it and he misses both. But despite those two missed free throws, this one's far from over. In the moment, I didn't realize who just got fouled. Oh, nice. And then if, you know, like Andre Drummond, yo. <laughs> so LeBron misses two, Malik Beasley misses two, and then Andre Drummond, bro. Oh my, bro, the only way, that's literally the only, Lonzo with the steal. Oh my God. Both teams want to lose, please, Lonzo, Lonzo, please. Oh my God. Give him the finals MVP. Give him the finals MVP if he makes this. He missed. Why? How are we missing so many free throws? Dame with the ball. Dame's about to send us home. Katie's standing in the corner. Franz goes over the screen. Okay. Just don't give up a three. Do not give up a three. Hell no. Blocked by James. And he's... Bro, I literally, in the midst of all that, I forgot we're in the finals. He just won a championship. That was not just the ugliest win in NBA history, but in the history of sports as a whole. But at the end of the day, though, it counts for LeBron. He has his first championship out of a potential five, and Jordan's finals loss earlier is really starting to sting. But it's still not over for him, because in the 2028 offseason, he would be joining LeBron as a 99 overall, which would be huge because the focus would be on him this season. Jordan would average 27 points to LeBron's 26. He would also win 60 games compared to LeBron's 59, and eventually, Eventually, come playoff time, he would be meeting LeBron in the conference finals. And with both his 99 overalls and the best players in the league, there's a lot on the line. I think whoever wins right now is going to wind up winning the championship. I don't think whoever's in the West is beating anyone. And in case you forgot, it's their second meeting, with Jordan defeating LeBron in their first matchup. But while you may think this time it would be pretty even, it would completely flip, as LeBron took over the series, averaging close to 30 points per game. And to be honest, Jordan's not playing poorly at all. LeBron's just that good. So good, in fact, that he's taking a 3-0 lead. Bro, Jordan, there's no way way you're about to go out like this dude no shot and unfortunately for raptors and jordan fans this series wouldn't last much longer lebron would defeat jordan by 15 points in game four with a 32 point performance officially sweeping him to head to the finals now he's heading to the golden state of california for a familiar matchup but this time they're missing a familiar face we're actually so far deep into this that steph's retired or he's gone probably retired but while steph's gone this warrior squad would include jordan Poole, mikhail bridges and bam Adebayo, so they're not to be underestimated at all lebron would do his thing dominating inside the paint, but as usual, the Warriors would give him some trouble, forcing a 2-2 series tie, but Game 5 would be the turning point. At that point, it didn't matter that there were three stars on the opposite team, because LeBron's the best out of the 10 on the floor. He would have his best playoff game to date with 38 points and 7 rebounds, putting his team on his back to go up 3-2. LeBron's up 3-2. If he doesn't blow this, he will be going up 2-0 on Jordan. Now we're heading back to Golden State for Game 6. The Warriors trio would put up a much better fight this time, keeping it close, but it might be too close, because they only have a 2 point lead with a minute left and the season on the line trying to go up 2-0 on jordan the warriors are trying to force game seven lebron with the ball with the screen from carter he passes it over to carter wide open shot he makes it and we have a tie game jordan Poole, what kind of shot was that oh my god jordan Poole selling dude he's about to be turned into a meme lebron with the ball lebron with the screen lebron could have probably pulled up lebron with the pass down to wendell carter bro at this point he's been on the team so long wendell carter's the vet jordan Poole's about to take the worst shot we've ever seen right now or well, either that or a turnover he almost turned it over i don't know what they're doing right now jk ties up the game 3.7 seconds left on the clock are we about to have another late game like championship for lebron they're just kind of standing around and he's about to take yep no lebron's about to take the worst shot we've ever seen oh my god he airballed it we're going to ot but despite airballing that last shot lebron seemed completely unfazed because once overtime kicked in he ended the game pretty quickly at this point it's safe to say he didn't want to risk game seven because even after it was out of reach he was still locked in lebron one more shot for the game and that's it. That's literally boom. LeBron would shortly after win his second championship, officially taking a 2-0 lead on Jordan, who desperately needs to bounce back. It's not over yet, because it's first to five, but this would be a crucial offseason for him. He 
has to get back in this race before it gets out of hand. But yet again, LeBron would be overshadowing him, averaging 29, 9, and 7, winning the first MVP between the two players. LeBron is on fire, man. And to be honest, right now it's looking awful for Jordan. LeBron seems primed for another deep playoff run, but this time Jordan would be the one to catch a break, because LeBron would be stopped right there in his tracks by the unlikely combo of Giannis and the Celtics. They would be able to pull off a massive upset to eliminate him first round. LeBron just choked horrendously. He lost as a first seed to the eighth seed, which means Jordan now has free reign over the Eastern Conference, and he would storm past Miami, Milwaukee, and ironically the Celtics to make it back to the finals. He lost his first appearance, but this time he's out for revenge. Jordan's up against the Clippers in the finals, who have Darius Garland and Tyrese Maxey as a backcourt. And that works in Jordan's favor, as the Clippers' backcourt is way too undersized to guard him. They would put up a solid fight, though, winning a few games in the process, but Jordan's bullying them on the other end. He would average 31 points per game to eventually go up 3-2, and the series would shift back to LA for Game 6, but let's be honest here, this one's over. Jordan would close out the series with a 40-point game, winning his first championship, bringing the series back to 2-1. Despite originally being down, he still has a very good chance to win this one. It's also worth mentioning that it's a combined 3 p for the two stars, with LeBron winning two of them, but the following season, both would lose all their momentum, as they would both be eliminated pretty early on in the playoffs. The 2031 season, though, that's a different story. Both players would lead their teams to 60 wins, with LeBron storming his way to the conference finals, and checking in on Jordan, he's been eliminated, which will be crucial in about 30 seconds, because LeBron would eventually make it to the actual finals against the Kings, and be greeted by possibly the worst team to ever make the finals. To be honest, bro, I think LeBron's getting lucky, because he's up against Sacramento. I don't know how they're in the finals. And I had a really good reason to be skeptical, as the Kings only won 37 games this year, barely making it into the playoffs, yet somehow they made it all the way to the finals. But let's be honest, we all know the run ends here, as LeBron's not losing to a 37 win team. And a lot of people might say he got bailed out, which is probably true, but at the end of the day, it counts. He's now up 3-1 to one on Jordan, who has made it to two finals himself, but unfortunately he only has one ring to show for it. And this time the media won't let up on him, declaring LeBron is the top star of the era, but it might not be that way for long. With two stars this good, they're easily the favorites for the championship, but before that's decided, they have to meet in the conference finals for a third time, with each winning one previous matchup. The odds are specifically stacked against Jordan though, as LeBron's coming off his third MVP and is the higher seed, and if he loses here, this competition might be over. There's a ton of mutual respect between the two players, but at the end of the day, only one will come out on top. You did. You. What you just saw was Jordan taking full control of the series, cooking LeBron until eventually he would take a 3-1 lead. And in Game 5, he was able to keep that momentum up, defeating LeBron on the road, sending him home. Jordan at the line for a trip to the finals, the second free throw is good. And he's going to be taking down LeBron. All Jordan has to do is win four more games, and while the Denver team he's up against has an insane duo of Booker and Jokic, none of the two can guard him. He would average 32 points per game, defeating them in five games to win his second championship. You know why Jokic lost too? Because Jokic somehow is wearing 34. Jordan with the pull up in the paint, it's good, it's a 20 point game. And that championship might be the most crucial we've seen thus far, as it brings him closer to LeBron. The series is now 3 to 2. We also need to appreciate the fact that we're entering season 10, and the two have a combined six finals appearances with five championships. Both are building MVP resumes, but this season, one will become closer to becoming the GOAT. And it all starts with yet another playoff matchup, where this time, LeBron would be in full control. And just as Jordan did last season, he's going up 3 to 1. Oh, bro, he might be done, man. And Jordan was in fact cooked, as the following game, LeBron would close him out. Every single time Jordan's had a hint of greatness, LeBron's been able to respond. Dude, Jordan's done. It's a 40-point game. Jordan's finished. LeBron would then storm past the following round to play against Denver in the finals, the same team that Jordan beat last season, and he would eerily have the same result, also defeating them in five games to win his fourth championship. If LeBron wins one more time, it's over, and Jordan probably should leave the Raptors in favor for a better team, but his unwavering loyalty means that he's running it back. For the 2034 season, he will lead that same squad to the third seed to match up against LeBron in the playoffs for a third straight season, but this time both teams would be evenly matched, and it would actually come down to the final minutes of Game 7. This is literally the most important game of Jordan's career. Three minutes left, LeBron with the ball. Game 7, if LeBron wins, he's going to the finals, and ironically, LeBron's the one who hasn't lost in the finals yet, so if he goes there, he could probably end it right now. I'm also kind of rambling a lot. Franz misses a shot. I'm honestly, I'm supposed to be unbiased, but I'm kind of rooting for Jordan, man. 
I want this to be close. The beautiful pass from Jordan, the block from Paolo. LeBron's with the ball. He drives into a crowd of people. Paolo, LeBron's sidekick. He smokes it. Okay. Jordan's still alive. It's only a two-point game. Mikhail Bridges somehow on the team. Pass it over to Jordan. Jordan with the step back on the baseline. That's his shot. He's not missing that. We have a tie game with 240 left. Jordan with only 21 points. That's kind of underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. LeBron being guarded by Jordan. LeBron with the size advantage. He gets the screen. Does absolutely nothing with it. Goes into an ISO behind the back. He almost dropped the ball. And, bro, who is leaving? Oh, my. What is going on with the Raptors defense? Oh, my God, bro. They are selling out Jordan so much. It might not even be his fault. It really might not. Yo, LeBron might have the better team. I'm not going to lie. Franz with the ball. Franz being guarded by OG. Just kind of standing there. Lonzo Ball with the ball. LeBron standing in the corner. Lonzo Ball, the most wide open, like a free throw. That's literally like a free throw. Oh, my God, bro. Jordan might be cooked, man. They really have to score fast. They throw it down to MJ in the post on the baseline. That's his spot. He's about to fade away. No, he bullies LeBron in the paint. That works. You know what? That works. Jordan has to get one more stop on LeBron. LeBron just pulls up with like 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Kind of questionable. That will be the shot. If they lose this game, if they lose this game, that'll be the shot we look. Oh, I don't even know where I'm going with this. That was a horrible shot from LeBron. Jordan's played some good defense on him down the stretch. They're going right into a LeBron pick and roll. LeBron with the pull up three. That could end it. Oh my god, it's over. Jordan sprinting up the court. Jordan between the legs. Jordan, yo, you gotta get a two for one. You gotta do something, bro. You gotta hurry it up. I don't know what he's doing right now. I'm not gonna lie. This is the worst possession. Oh my god, blocked by James. It's over. It's over. LeBron's going to the finals. LeBron will hit a few more free throws to officially seal it, and that's it. He's sending Jordan home and is heading to yet another finals. He's been there four times before and hasn't lost yet. And while he's up against a pretty solid Timberwolves squad, it doesn't seem like they have enough to stop him, as LeBron would average an MVP-worthy stat line of 29 9, 9 and 7 to lead the Magic to a 3-2 lead. And in the final minutes of Game 6, he would finish the job. LeBron at the top of the key. LeBron with a pull-up at the elbow. It's good, man. And he has 30 points. He's also played almost the entire game. They're about to pass it out to Cade. Cade, LeBron with the steal! LeBron's going all the way. LeBron with the slam! <laughs> and with that slam, this one is officially over. King James has won his fifth championship, crowning him as the greatest of all time. Jordan put up a really good fight, but in the end, it wasn't enough. With that being said, one of the toughest players LeBron has ever had to face would have to be Steph Curry, who beat him in the finals three times. But what if we started everything over with both in the same draft class, similar to what we just saw? Would LeBron win two in a row? To find out the answer to that question, click the video on the screen.